In the ninth question, a function is given to us that is f of x, which is equal to minus 3x square plus 2. And it's valid only for the values of x, which is less than or equal to minus 1. Now, in the first part, we are asked to state the range of this function. So now, whenever there is a question of range, I always recommend to all of my students to draw a rough sketch of this quadratic or whatever is the function that is given to us in the question. Sketch that, look at the domain and just get the range out of it. So if I just have to draw a rough diagram over here, so what I'll do is I'll just create a proper template on which I can sketch this graph, let's say over here. A rough graph is going to do the job, all right? So we know that over here, the it's already given in the computing square format. So the val value of the vertex is 0, 0,2. So 0, 0,2 is somewhere over here. Right? So let's say this is 0, 0,2. And because the coefficient of x square is negative, the graph is going to look something like this. And now to just get the uh, fill of this x intercept, what is it going to be? So if I solve this minus 3x squared plus 2 equal to 0, your x square will be equals to 2 by 3. And therefore, your x is nothing but plus minus square root of 2 by 3. So now we got this idea that on the left, we are having square root of minus, I mean, minus of square root of 2 by 3. And over here, it is positive square root of 2 by 3. Now, let's see the domain. The domain is actually less than or equal to negative 1. So all the values of x, which are less than or equal to minus 1. So obviously, we know that because this is 2 by 3, and if you're taking the under root of it, this value is smaller than negative 1. So negative 1 would be, let's say, somewhere over here. Right? And if I just map the value over here, if I extend the graph, if I extend the graph like this, for example, and map a value on this, let's say, what's the output do we get for the y when the x value is negative 1? So negative 1 square is 1, minus 3 plus 2 is negative 1 itself. So over here also, we are having negative 1. So for all the values of x which are less than or equal to negative 1, the outputs that we are going to get is either minus 1 or anything below that. So what's the range that we are getting for this function, for this given domain? We can say that f of x is going to be less than or equal to negative 1. So this kind of graphs are always handy when we are doing this kind of questions. Whenever I see students are getting range, they just get confused. They just substitute this value without thinking into this equation. But there is a logic. Always draw a rough sketch and you will get an exact idea. You will never go wrong in this kind of questions. Now coming to the second part, we are asked to find the expression for f inverse x. So now to get that, we know that first of all, we need to exchange my x with y and this y with x. So therefore, we are having y or I should say x is equals to minus 3y squared plus 2. So this means I am having 3y squared is equals to 2 minus x. And now if I make the y as subject, it would be y is equals to plus minus under root of this 2 minus x. And I'm also dividing this with 3, right? And only then I can get the square root. So now we have to define or we have to identify whether a plus sign would be there or a negative sign would be there. So now that can be done by looking at the domain of this thing because we know that domain of this function is actually the range of this particular function and vice versa, right? But now because we are to the left of the vertex, we are always going to choose a negative sign. Whenever we are to the right of the vertex of the original uh, curve or the original function, at that time, for inverse, we choose plus. So in this condition, because we are to the left of the vertex, we are going to choose minus as the final answer. Again, if you don't know all these kind of concepts, then it's the right time that you enroll for our batch. If you don't want to study everything of AS level or A level, if you just want to study a particular chapter, even those kind of registrations are open, feel free to contact on this number and I'll personally tell you how you can proceed ahead and learn only these kind of concepts. Okay. So along with the chapter wise, I'll explain all these kind of concepts of functions, which are again, very crucial to understand when plus will come, when minus will come. All right. 
So yeah, as I mentioned, because we are to the left of the vertex in the original equation, in this inverse function, we are going to get negative square root of 2 minus x divided by 3. Right? So yeah, that's the answer of part B. That's your answer of part A. And now comes the last part of this question, where we are given a function g, which is defined as following, again for the same x less than equal to negative 1. And now we have to solve this equation, fgx minus gfx plus 8 is equal to 0. So how can we do it? So let me just write what is my function f over here. It's given that function f is minus 3 x squared plus 2 for all values of x less than equals to negative 1. So now what is my f of g of x? Let me find that. So when I am going to keep my function g as an input to this function f, I'll be getting f of g of x. So my this function is now going to be acting as the input of this function f. So it will become minus 3. Wherever there is x, I need to write g of x. That is minus x squared minus 1. And this is basically squared plus 2. So if you go ahead and simplify this, it will be minus 3. Then if you open this, x minus x squared will actually become x power of 4. Then if you multiply minus 1, minus 1, that is positive 1 into 2, that becomes 2 and there is also x squared. And then minus 1 squared is actually 1 itself and then there is 2. So this is the same as writing minus 3x power 4, then minus 6 x squared, then minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. So that's your f of g of x. Similarly, we are going to find out what is g of f of x. So now this function f is acting as an input to your function g. So now this is going to be replaced with the x of g, right? So now we are having minus and instead of x, we are having the function. So that is minus 3x squared plus 2, which is now squared. And now there is also a minus 1. So if you simplify this, what do we get? There is a minus sign. Then this becomes minus 3 squared is actually 9. So 9x power of 4 minus 3 into 2 is minus 6. Minus 6 into 2 is 12. Minus 12. So minus 12. There is also x squared. And then 2 squared is 4. And then there is a minus 1. So this is becoming minus 9x power of 4. Then minus minus is plus 12x squared. Then minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5. So now we have got what is fg and what is gf. Now we simply need to plug these two equations into this equation, like this main equation, and then equate it to zero and just solve this kind of equation. So let's see what do we get. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to erase everything else that we don't need. So we don't need this. And uh, this is your f of g of x, which will, which you, you don't need to delete this kind of stuff in your final examination. You need to show all the steps, right? So don't delete those steps. I'm just doing it so that we get extra space over here. And now remember it's minus of g of x, right? So just uh, have a minus sign uh, uh, just uh, before this, whatever you are writing over here, right? So I just have a small space. So it's minus of this, then there is plus 8 equal to 0. So now let's simplify this. So this becomes 9x power of 4 minus 3, which is 6x to the power of 4. Then if I talk about the x square terms, minus 12x square minus 6x square becomes minus 18x square. And then the constants, minus 1 plus 5, which is plus 4, 4 plus 8 is 12. Now I'm simply going to use my KLC to solve this hidden quadratic equation. So you can say that like, you know, this is, this is nothing but it's a 6 u square minus 18 u plus 12. You can assume that u is equal to x square. But I'm just going to solve it in terms of x square without doing this kind of substitution. All right? Because I know that it's the hidden quadratic equation for x square. 
So if I use my KLC, plug the value of A as 6, B as minus 18, and C as 12, I'm getting the values of X squared is equals to 1 or X squared is equals to 2. So therefore, the factors over here will be X squared minus 1 and X squared minus 2 is equal to 0. Because we have to solve this equation, we simply have to find out the values of x for which we know that x in both the cases is less than or equal to minus 1. So yeah, that's the basic domain we are having. So all the values that we are going to choose must be less than or equal to negative 1. So over here, therefore, we can say that x is equals to plus minus square root of 1 or x is equals to plus minus square root of so now square root of uh, negative 1 will be nothing but, I mean, negative of square root of 1 will be a negative 1 and negative uh, under root 2 will be the solution. So the final values over here for x is negative 1 comma negative root 2. So yeah, these are the final answers of part C of question 9.